Good evening, it's another Dream Whiskies live broadcast here on Facebook. How are you doing? It's week 31. Uh, not that that means it's week 31 of the year, it's just week 31 since we started doing these as a weekly broadcast, which was back in February. So, week 31, uh, good to see you all, hope you've all had a good week. Of course, last week was the final of our cocktail competition, so it's like a huge crescendo, really. Uh, and then you might notice that something is missing this week and uh, something that I guess uh, has started to become a bit of a regular, uh, uh, I was going to say a regular fixture, but maybe regular appearance. And that of course is Cheryl. Cheryl's not here. She did four weeks in a row. Obviously she was judging all the rounds of the cocktail competition plus the final. Uh, but she decided to take it easy this, easy this evening. She'll be putting some comments in there. So she's with us. She's just not in front of the camera this evening. Uh, so let's see who is joining us. Who's up first? Always good to see the early ones joining us. Kieran, hi. How you doing? Hope you had a good week. Uh, Carl is saying hi or evening to Jeff. Jeff, of course, our cocktail champion from last week. Uh, there's a really nice picture of Jeff with his winning cocktail, plus the cocktail kit that we sent him as well as a prize uh, on the Facebook page. And uh, going to be building a nice little page for him also on the website, slightly behind with those sort of things, sorry at the moment. Loads of things going on, so uh, I'm a little bit slow getting to those bits and pieces, but there's going to be a, a sort of um, cocktail champions page, which of course is going to feature Jeff, but we'll also put the runners up there as well. So uh, as people like Mark and uh, Dave, plus a few of the other recipes also for the people that got involved there. Cheryl saying hi to everyone. Bob Robertson, who was last week's Whiskey Geek of the Week and has set our questions for this evening. Uh, Richard Webster, we all know as Michael, or Michael we all know as Richard Webster, is with us. How are you doing? Avril, good to see you. Cat Jam, Barry, uh, Ben, Ben, good morning. Where is morning? I guess you're, you're over there, right? You're, you're, you're out there to the west, west of us. Anyway, I'm assuming, uh, Ben, you're somewhere over in the United States. If you're saying good morning, probably West Coast, actually, now I'm thinking of it. Bob, how are you? Paul, good to see you as well. Dave, all present and correct here. Well, you know how we start? Before anything, uh, we need to have a little toast, a little drink. Uh, this is what I got on the go this evening. Glen Dronach, 12-year-old. Uh, this is their original Highland uh, malt, which actually is a theme, or mostly a theme, for Bob's Geek of the Week questions this evening. Uh, pretty much um, Highland... Uh, Highland whiskey themed, although there's a, a little tweak in there, so not 100%. Not but anyway, that's what I got on the go. What have you got on the go to have a little toast with me? Let's just pop that in there before we get started on our week 31 broadcast. Uh, who else is with us tonight? Uh, Keith Kaima Lesage. Lesage or Lesage? Howdy, Paul. Uh, Keith, uh, uh, have I seen you on here before? I'm not sure if I have, but I definitely haven't seen that wonderful name come up. Tell me if I pronounced it right, but how do you write back at you? Oh, Ben, you're in uh, British Columbia, Canada. Okay, so I sort of got it right. I mean, as in west of where I am. Anyway, uh, morning from Oakland, California. That's Michelle. Great to see you as well. And, uh, and just starting us off, telling us what you're drinking. So, you know, if you're having a toast with me tonight, let us know what you've got in your glass. Doesn't have to be whiskey. If you've been uh, signing on the last three or four weeks, you know when Cheryl's with us, she has a rum and coke. So whatever you've got on the go, cup of tea, just tell us what you are drinking. Kilcher man for uh, Michael. Um, Paul, what are you saying? Oh, finish the antibiotics, brilliant. Uh, so you've opened up the wolf burn. Let us know how that one works. Cats on the Jura 7 wood. Like that, a bit of a Jura fan. Uh, got some Juras over here. I think you can probably see as well. Uh, Kieran's got Macallan 12. Now, interestingly, the Macallan 12 is uh, one of my favourites. A lot of people slate Macallan, but I just think that's, uh, I don't know, if you're really successful, then people tend to have a little pop at you, don't they? But I love the Macallan, in particular the 12-year-old. Uh, John Matthews, my father-in-law. Hey, John, how are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, John is going to be spending Friday night with me here, and we're going to be cracking open a really special bottle of whiskey. Now, I'm not going to tell you guys what it is because I haven't told John what it is yet, but John, looking forward to that. Um, Barry, Crabby's Yardhead. I don't know that one. Don't know that, Barry. You're going to have to tell me a bit more about that. Uh, congratulations going out there, says Cheryl. I'm not quite sure what you're saying congratulations for. What is that for? 
Uh, not sure. And uh, and Tim. Oh, Tim. <laughs> ah, Tim. Tim is on the Glen Dronach as well because Tim, of course, is uh, is a man who is intimately involved with whiskey. I don't want to tell you how involved he is with Glen Dronach, otherwise you guys are going to be peppering him with questions about it. But Tim, great to see you there. I'm delighted that you've joined us. So look, cheers to everyone that is drinking with us tonight. Cheers, cheers. Let's just knock a little bit back. Mmm. And our Glen Dronach 12 this evening is going to form the basis of our three cocktails, which we will come to as we go through the broadcast. But have I got three cracking drinks for you tonight? And I'm hoping... Well, I know that at least one of them is going to get swiped off the bar, you know, out of shot as it, as it always is. Uh, but I think one of them is going to stay here with me. We'll see how it goes, but three really great concoctions. So before we do anything, you know what happens. We're going to uh, announce, or I'm going to announce, the winner of our latest whiskey giveaway competition. So that was week 30, which finished at midnight, UK time, last night. Obviously, Week 31 competition is already up and running, so if you are a member, you are in that competition, or you can enter that competition as well. If you're not a member, you know what you have to do. You have to sign up and become a member. We've been, been giving away whiskies every single week since February, before that every month. Uh, so become a member. Uh, you are properly missing out. That's all I can say there. Actually, it's not all I can say, but that is one of the things I'm going to say. Who is the winner this week? So last night's midnight winner was... Eric Jarrell from Ireland. Eric, I, I'm not even sure if I've seen you on here either, Eric. But Eric, congratulations if you're there, because a lot of people watch and don't comment. But if you're there, Eric, say hi. Tell us you're jumping up and down. If not, I'm going to send you an email tomorrow to let you know that you're our winner. Uh, what else is going on here? A little bit of a gift going out from Cheryl. What's that gift? Oh, a cheers. Yeah, loving that. Uh, Barry. Uh, what's that? A no age, no distillery... Uh, whiskey with a pineapple hint sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. Adrian Bain, how are you doing? One of our whiskey competition winners. Uh, Adrian, have you cracked open that whiskey yet? Let us know. Uh, Gary, Jameson Stout Edition. Uh, actually, I, I'm a bit of a fan of that one as well, I've got to admit. Nice choice, Gary. Dave, what you got? Scapa or Kalian tonight? Nice one. And Kaz, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Kaz, uh, tell us what you're drinking as well. Cheryl, can I have a tabletop old-fashioned, please? Cheryl's just uh, uh, referencing, of course, the winner of last week's cocktail competition. Jeff, uh, the, you know, the most complex old-fashioned, I think, that I've ever made. Uh, a fabulous drink, and now Cheryl started asking for it. After, you know, years of me trying to get to drink old-fashioned, she wants the most complex one ever made. Uh, I will see. Actually, I've got an old fashioned for you guys tonight as well. I was sort of kind of inspired by, by Jeff's cocktail from last week. But it's, it's a variation that many of you won't have seen. And, uh, and I think it's actually quite delicious. So that's coming up uh, a little bit later on. Uh, last week's winner of our spot prize competition. Remember I gave away a little bottle of this? Well, actually, it's one of our runners up from last week's cocktail competition. It might look like I'm trying to do this just to make up for the fact that you didn't win the cocktail competition, but uh, your name came out of the hat, so what can I do? You were drawn, Dave Chilton, that's yours. You were the spot prize winner from last week. Uh, not that one, of course, that's mine, but I will be sending you another bottle of Pessoa, so you can go and make yourself a whole range of cocktails. And I know it's not a whiskey cocktail, but you can, uh, you can go and make yourself a nice um, uh, porn star martini. Uh, which was invented, of course, by an old friend of mine as well. Right, uh, what else have we got going on here? Carl, you've got Glenn Fiddick this evening. That's lovely. Cheryl's saying that's the most delicious old-fashioned she knows. Cat Jam, what's going on? Uh, we had a lovely blurry evening on Sunday having old fashions with your spot prize. Brilliant. <laughs> Loving that. Uh, congrats to the winners, says Barry. I'll see if yours is as good as Jeff's. Now, now Jeff, that you got me in trouble now. Uh, um, Jeff is saying that his wife always asks for that too. Uh, well, is, is that why you entered? I'm assuming that's why you entered it. Cheers, thank you so much. Says Dave, you are welcome. Absolutely delighted. And congrats to the winners from Paul. Uh, so look, before we get into our first cocktail this evening, you know how it goes. We've got our Whiskey Geek of the Week competition. Are you geeky enough to become our Whiskey Brain of Britain for this week? So as ever, last week's winner has set the questions. And as you know, last week's winner was Bob Robertson, who, i just got to put this out there, sent in the most wonderful photograph. So you know I always ask you guys, if you win the Whiskey Geek, you send me a photograph of yourself with a bottle or a glass of whiskey, 
and uh, I put you up on our board on the website. Uh, but but uh, uh, Bob has an advantage <laughs> because Bob's wife is a professional photographer, has taken the most gorgeous photograph, really beautiful photograph of him looking super cool drinking his whiskey. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I've posted it on the Facebook page. It is on our website. Just go and check it out. It's a great photograph. So congratulations to that for Bob and also for Bob's wife for taking an amazing picture. Uh, but Bob has set our questions for this week and we're going to dive into questions one, two and three before we go to our first cocktail of the evening. So get yourselves ready. If you're going to have a go, our little fun Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz, you know what you need. Starts with some paper and a pencil or a pen, uh, just so you can write down the answers. Our first three questions, as ever, are anagrams. Anagrams of either a whiskey or a whiskey distillery. So you might want to write these down, but also remember that uh, Cheryl will put the questions up in the comments after I've asked them as well. So get yourself ready. Question one, two, and three coming up. Bob, you are welcome, of course. Thanks to you, but uh, you're absolutely welcome. Uh, so here we go, question one. These are anagrams, going to give you the words. You've got to sort them into whiskies. What are the whiskies? Uh, number one is Mad Law. Mad Law. And that's M A D for Mad, and then L O R E for Law. Mad Law. That's question number one. What whiskey or whiskey distillery is that? Mm. Question number two. Uh, Another, obviously, uh, as all three of them are, another anagram, and it's A Morning Glee. A Morning Glee. Uh, and that's A, as in the letter A, and then morning, as it sounds, M-O-R-N-I-N-G, and then Glee, G-L-E-E. -E, A Morning Glee. Which whiskey or whiskey distillery is that? Hope you got that written down. Very nice. Uh, and then, uh, actually, Bob came up with a couple of uh, anagrams for this uh, third one. Uh, changed his mind during the week and so uh, sent me a different version of it. But here we go. Same answer. Uh, and it's this. Number three is Up Teen Dolly. Up Teen Dolly. So Up, U-P, Teen, T-E-E-N, and Dolly, D-O-L-L-Y. Those are questions one, two, and three. Cheryl will pop them up in the comments in a second in case you missed them. And of course, you've got the whole broadcast to try and work those out. But what are those anagrams of? They are all whiskies, stroke whiskey distillers. What are they? Okay, cocktail number one coming up. So uh, some of you, if you go back a few months, you will know that I've been working on a, a kind of drink version of the little uh, sort of chocolate sweets that are made by Reese's, the Reese's peanut butter cups and I've been playing around with this a bit and it's been going back and forth and I think I've nailed the recipe now I've nailed it in terms of it's where I want it to be so I thought I'm going to share that with you I've given it a name and the name is chocolate nutter cup so rather than the uh, peanut butter cup this is my chocolate nutter cup and uh, and this is how you make it so let's get my my board out of the way so I'm going to start this is a shaking cocktail uh, here is our glass, so it's going to be going into this kind of 1930s style, cross between, what, a martini and uh, um, champagne kind of glass, I think? Maybe a sort of flute and a martini, somewhere in the middle there. Anyway, it's going to go into that, so let's get this out of the way. Uh, we're going to start with our ingredients, of course we're going to start with our whiskey. So, I'm going to put in, first of all, 45ml of our whiskey, so let's get that measured out. So 45 ml, there we go. Very nice. Now, what I'm gonna add now is some chocolate flavor in the form of a couple of different, different ingredients. So I'm gonna start with some brown creme de cacao. And for those of you that aren't familiar with this, creme de cacao is mostly chocolate flavor, but also we've got vanilla in there as well. So it has a relatively unique, it's not strictly uh, chocolate as a lot of people think it is. And I'm going to put 20 ml, of, and this is a brown one. We've got the white one as well, the clear one, but I just want to use the brown one now because that's important for the color of the cocktail. And, uh, and I'm putting 20 ml of that. So that's just under a UK shot. All right, that's good. Who's talking to me? Who's talking to me? Kaz, what are you saying? Love those peanut butter cups. Yeah, and so does Cheryl, by the way, which is why I've been working on these for some time. Uh, in fact, there she says, she's even saying, 
So I don't even need to, need to say that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some chocolate spread. Now, it's, it's no ordinary chocolate spread. This is a bit like, um, the one that I'm using is a, is a sort of gluten dairy free one, which is just in relation to my own allergies. But the flavor is a bit like that sort of Nutella chocolate hazelnut, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, and I'm putting a good squeeze, which is gonna be equivalent to, let me just get that in there. Um, I would say about a, a, a soup spoon, maybe. So around about 10 to 15 mil of that chocolate spread. And it's got to be that sort of chocolate hazelnut one. If you start using those sort of deep, dark chocolate spreads, it's not going to come up with the same flavor and the same balance that we are looking for. Then, of course, peanut butter. Now, you can use crunchy peanut butter, but quite frankly, I would be saying to you, strain the bits out of that. So use smooth. It makes more sense. And, and I'm going to take a bar spoon of our peanut butter. And uh, it's not an exact me measurement, really. It's... Uh, it's about that much. Can you see? There we go. In mil, that might be, if you were pouring that, that might be as much as 20 mil. Anyway, let me drop that in there. That's good. You can see that's looking nice and gloopy. Very nice. Let me pop my spoon back there. Then I'm going to add some more sweetness. I know there's already sweetness in there, but a little more sweetness. Avril, if you're working, watching, I know you've got a thing about the fact that I use this all the time but I'm using some of our lovely organic buckwood, 100% pure uh, Canadian maple syrup. Uh, and I'm putting in around about five to 10 mil. I'm just doing it by eye, for about five to 10 mil. That is good. And then finally, the last ingredient, which I am gonna measure is 25 mil of cream. So let's get that to 25 mil mark and get that in the glass. Now, if you are on a diet of any kind, unless it is a high sugar, high fat diet, this drink is not for you. Um, but actually, most of the things that are in there, based on uh, you know, current nutritional information, are actually relatively good for you, really. Uh, apart from the sugar stuff, of course. Uh, so that's all our ingredients. Uh, we want to give this a really good shake, so I'm just going to ice up my shaker. Let's get a good amount of ice in there. Let's get everything in here as well. And because of the chocolate sauce, which is really thick, the peanut butter, we need to give this, you can see it all dropping down the side of the glass. We need to give this a really good shake. Who's talking to me, by the way? Bruce is here. Don't want to miss your comment, Bruce. I will come back to what you're saying, but let me give this a shake. Here we go. And I'm going to shake a little bit longer than I would normally do. Because I want that to be completely broken down and really nice and smooth. So let's get our glass into place. I'm gonna take my strainer and we're gonna strain this into our glass. And look at that. I mean, the color obviously tells you the kind of flavor. You know what's in there. You know the combination of flavors in here. Gonna bring that right up to the top of the glass. Let me just quickly, while I'm talking to you, just rinse off my because I'm going to need that for another drink. And then what I'm doing here is I've got in here, I don't know if you can see, let me just sort of cover it from the light a little bit. But these are ground cashew nuts. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of ground cashew on the top. And I've actually found that in terms of trying to recreate this idea of the Reese's peanut butter cup, that these cashews, because they're really quite neutral, work in a way a bit better than the peanuts. So uh, won't use my fingers, just going to use my bar spoon and I'm just going to tap these on the surface like so. There we go. Happy with that. And there we are done. This is cocktail number one for this evening. This is my chocolate nutter cup. Let's just pop that over there to the side. Not quite sure what may or may not happen to that. All right, let me go back in the comments a little bit. I saw Bruce was with us. Uh, Cheryl saying Nutella, um, Bruce, uh, here but not here, multitasking with this and work, uh, and I'm having a variation on the pickleback martini cocktail from the whiskey course. That is a great cocktail, <laughs> and that's my whiskey course, which I'm going to talk to you guys about, actually, actually I'm going to talk to you guys about in a second. Um, I'm using sweet hot gherkin pickle in the liquor, wow, that sounds pretty good, Bruce. Is that what you're drinking at work? You're going to have to remind me what you do for work because your job sounds really good. Unless, of course, you're a bartender. I've never really asked you that. A big thumbs up for Dave. 
Uh, actually, let's go back to Cheryl. Joe, how are you doing? Uh, enjoy my compass box. No name. You're welcome. Joe won the week before last. Chose the compass box whiskey, which uh, I think a couple of winners have chosen that one. Um, what's this? Cheryl saying I'm worried she's going to like this too much, to be honest. Uh, hi, Nikki. Is Nikki here? Oh, Nikki's here. Hey, Nikki. That's a kiss to Nikki. She's my sister. She lives in America. I live here in the UK. So uh, that's a long distance kiss. To my sis, Bruce sounds like drink number one could be a breakfast drink. I tell you what about drink number one, there's a very good chance it could be disappearing pretty cool. Bruce, what you're saying, you're an IT tech and work from home. Right, okay, I got it. You're at home in your basement with a pickle bat. Loving that. <laughs> right, that drink is gone. <laughs> and you guys know where it's gone. <laughs> Okay, that drink's gone. Uh, let me come back. Let's come back. We come back. Uh, so I didn't actually tell you this week's spot prize. So I'm doing a really special spot prize for you this week. So you know that we have the whiskey competition, the whiskey giveaway every week. But uh, the spot prize, which last week was a bottle of Pessoa, the week before that was some chili sauce to put in your whatever drink's going to do. Uh, uh, this week, I've decided that uh, if you're already a member, then as a member, as part of your membership, you get access to my online whiskey course, uh, which is a really detailed whiskey cocktail course, uh, which we sell for 60 pound a time. And, uh, uh, and it goes out to uh, you know, king whiskey drinkers, people at home, home mixologists, but also professionals as well enroll on this course. So it's a really decent deal that becomes part of your membership. But uh, what I've decided to do is give away this week to one lucky person as our spot prize winner is a suite of my courses. In other words, if you win this week, then what you will get is not only the whiskey course, which as a member you already have access to, but you will also get the gin cocktail course. You'll get the rum cocktail course. You'll get the vodka cocktail course. And you will also get the tequila cocktail course. Those five courses come as a group. If you wanted to buy them online, which is the only other way that you can get access to this course, it would cost you £200 to enroll on that suite of, of online courses. One of you, one of our members, is going to win that this week as a spot price. Can't say any fairer than that. Okay, yeah, Nikki's saying, oops, it's gone, it's gone, that is gone. You know what it's like, if it goes and comes back two minutes later, then it means that the cocktail that I've made hasn't gone down as well. But if it goes and doesn't come back, it's a hit. That is absolutely a hit. All right, let's get into the second round. Oh, hold on a second. Tim, why, uh, why weren't you on here recently? So Tim... Okay, Tim, I'm going to tell people who you are. So Tim is uh, somebody that I know very well and uh, also doing uh, some work with. And uh, who knows, he might also be involved with us at Dream Whiskies in the future as well. Uh, just giving you a few clues. But what are you saying? You're going to throw in a bottle of creme de cacao to the winner so they can make that. Thank you very much. So Tim is throwing in a bottle of creme de cacao. And I can tell you it will be this, this uh, Jiffar. Uh, creme de cacao, which is an absolutely delicious and superb high quality product. Um, if I'm going to be choosing stuff, well, this is why I've got it on the bar. Says, so Tim will make sure as well that the winner is going to get a bottle of that. Thank you very much, Tim. Really appreciate that. Hopefully, as the weeks go by, everyone, uh, depending on my conversations with Tim over the coming weeks, uh, you might get to know a little bit more about him, and he might be slightly more involved in some of the things that we do. But thank you, Tim. That's really cool. Uh, Kaz, what's going on? What a fab prize, yeah. Plus uh, everything else that's going on. Bruce just finished the whole course. So Bruce did take the whiskey course. Bruce, if you win this, you have all the other courses to do as well. Top prize is... Uh, uh, Richard Webster, who uh, I don't—I have to tell everyone every time that Richard Webster is Michael Nolan, but I, re I reckon you, all, you guys all know that already. Okay, look, second part of our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz. Questions four, five, and six coming up. Get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. And here we go. Remember, these all set by last week's Whiskey Geek. That was Bob Robertson. Another cheers to you. Uh, just looking at the comments there while I took another little bit of whiskey. Uh, here we go. Question number four. 
I'd like to know which whiskey distillery is the closest one to Loch Ness geographically, obviously, rather than spiritually. Uh, yeah, which whiskey distillery is the closest to Loch Ness? Uh, just making a point that whiskey distillery, because there are other distilleries, non whiskey, that are in that area as well. So, which whiskey distillery is the closest to not Loch Ness? That was question number four. Okay, question number five. Gary saying great prize as well. Uh, Bruce is saying, I take it that Jibba brand is the one to go with. Well, for me, absolutely. Uh, Bruce, you'll know if you watch the whiskey course that they, those are the liqueurs I use right the way through that. Actually, I've used them in every one of those five online courses that I'm talking about. So, yes. And an incredible range as well. Um, we're going to be using another one of those products actually in a second. Uh, question number five. Uh, what is the new distillery near Dingwall called? Okay, so there is a new distillery near Dingwall. What is it called? Come on, geeks. Now, actually, when I got these questions through, uh, the general view of Bob himself was that he felt these were sort of easier than, for example, Kaz, who did some real brain teasers last week. Um, but the question is, is it? Because you never know. I mean, you know, they're easy when you know the answer. And if you don't know the answer, suddenly they're not that easy, really. That was question five. Question six, before we go into our second cocktail of the evening. Question six. I'd like to know which Japanese-owned Highland distillery is just south of Inverness, okay? So it's right there, just south of Inverness, owned by a Japanese company. Uh, uh, which one is it? Which one is it? So that's questions four, five, and six. As ever, Cheryl will put the questions up in the comments so you can go back over them. Uh, and, and how are you doing? Remember, a uh, point for each question. There's a couple of double point questions coming up a bit later on. Uh, and if you get the most, you will be on our wall of fame, our whiskey geeks. All right, good. Now, quest uh, question. <laughs> Cocktail number two. Wow, okay. <laughs> As you know, <laughs> Cheryl has been sabotaging the names of the cocktails on my iPad here. And uh, yeah. That just kind of shocked me there. There you go. By the way, Cheryl's put up the, uh, the, the questions there. You can see them. So if you missed them first time around. Look, I got inspired by uh, Jeff's winning cocktail from our cocktail competition last week. I uh, really love that tabletop old-fashioned. And it made me think of some of the old-fashioned variations that I used to make years ago when I was working in bars, when I had hair here and nothing here. So, uh, yeah, a bit like that. Uh, so a long time ago, and, and one of them that sort of popped into my mind, I haven't made for ages, I decided to mess around with it a little bit and see if I could evolve, and it's this, and I call it a coffee and pistachio old-fashioned. It's actually quite a simple mix to make, uh, and uh, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to build it in the glass like we do with most old-fashioned. So we're going to take our Rocks old-fashioned style glass. And the first thing I'm going to do is going to add our sugar. Now, ordinarily with an old fashioned, I'm saying to you, uh, use two, uh, use one large or two sort of small modern sugar cubes because that's the traditional way to make a traditional old fashioned. This time, I'm actually going to say to you, don't do that. Uh, I'm using this as our sweetener. And funnily enough, with Tim online tonight as well, it looks like I'm, it looks like I knew because I know about his relationship with this brand, obviously. Uh, but uh, the, the Giffard also do these syrups, and I'm using the pistachio syrup. And the pistachio is gonna give us a slightly sort of crunchy, nutty flavor and, and aroma. Although, you know, with pistachio flavor, by comparison to pistachio nuts, um, they're, they're quite distinct. So this is very much the pistachio flavor that you would find in desserts that we're looking for. And I'm going to put in 10 mil. I'm going to do it by eye. So 10 mil for me equates to what would have been an old-fashioned large sugar cube. Uh, uh, or two modern ones, really, which are half the size for whatever reason. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is here, I've just got some instant coffee. That's it. Instant coffee. We don't have to get too precious on the quality of the coffee here. But this is a rather nice one. Uh, I, I spent a few pounds on this jar of instant coffee and I just want what is going to equate to about a third again just try to get that up in front of the camera can you see 
about a third of my bar spoon, so not a lot. And I'm going to drop that into our pistachio syrup, and I'm just going to start to give that a little stir because I want the coffee to start breaking down. And because it's instant coffee, as it gets wet, I mean obviously if it was boiling water on this, it would just dissolve straight away. But as it gets wet, it will start to break down. If I was using fresh coffee grounds, then what we would find is that not enough of the coffee flavor would infuse because none of this is gonna be hot. So they are starting to melt or dissolve. Um, but we're going to give them a little bit of time to do that. Okay, let me just tap that out. Uh, let me just get this. Bear with me a second. Okay. All right, I got that there. Now what I want to do is I want to add some whiskey. Just a little bit of our whiskey to help this process along. So I'm going to be blending the pistachio flavor with the coffee and with the, uh, uh, with the whiskey. So this is again going to help it start to dissolve. So let's break that down. And this is starting to release. So you can see that as the color changes a little bit, and we've still got obviously these bits of coffee in here, but they will start to break down. There we go. All right, they're starting to happen. Now to help this process along, and it very much is a build in the glass, I'm going to start to add some ice. So I've got some nice cubes of ice, like proper square cubes of ice. And I want to get that in again. And I want to start to now blend the coffee and the syrup and also the whiskey. Uh, but I'm also now starting to re-chill the ingredients. So the ice will help to chill. And as we all know, when it comes to uh, drinks like the old fashioned, we find ourselves in a position where we are controlling very gentle dilution as we build this up. All right, so the coffee slowly, I have to say, is breaking down just as we want it. Right, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to add some bitters. Now, this is, this is contrary to how you would make a traditional old-fashioned because the bitters would go in really early. But now I'm going to add the bitters, and these bitters are Aztec chocolate bitters uh, by Fee Brothers. And these bitters are incredibly aromatic. So these chocolate ones are just full of aroma and flavor. And I'm just going to add one, two, three, four dashes of those chocolate bitters. And they will blend, again, very nicely with the flavors that are in there. So the coffee and the pistachio and the ice. So let's just give that another stir. Get that off the side of the glass. What are you all saying to me here? Uh, she was saying that syrup is also delicious in my morning coffee. Yes, it is. It's very difficult to keep her away. Uh, better finish cocktail number one. I think so. Quick, Cheryl, says Nicky. Yeah. So this is blending up very nicely indeed. Going to go back for some more ice. So let's get another cube oh, or two of this wonderful big square ice. And then I'm going to bring the whiskey up pretty much to the level. So now we're in a position where we have around about 35 to 40 ml of whiskey along with that. Again, blending everything down. And I'm starting to really smell the combination of the whiskey, the, the pistachio syrup, and of course the coffee that is in there. And those subtle flavors that we add really starting to make a difference. Okay, that's good. Now, another cube of ice. Let me get this one out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that in the middle. And this is really quite important. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to use a small amount of our maraschino liqueur. This is the maraschino cherry liqueur. And this is going to equate to about 10 ml. Because I find that with coffee and with things like chocolate bitters and the pistachio in there, this sort of underlying very subtle hint of the maraschino cherry actually combined beautifully to create something which is, I don't know, a really familiar combination of flavors and aromas. So we've got that in there as well. I'm also going to take one of these, which of course you're familiar with, with a lot of my cocktails. It's a, what I would call a stalk on maraschino cherry. Just give it a squeeze and drop that inside like so. And then I'm going to add a little more of our whiskey to bring this up to around 60 to 65 ml. And you will notice that obviously because the coffee is in it, by comparison to a standard old-fashioned, it's kind of murky actually in terms of colour. 
but it makes me think a little bit of what we do when we make a, a dirty martini by putting in things like the olive juice to make it slightly murky. Or actually, I made the other day, I made a, a, a dirty Gibson. So if you, don't, if you know what a Gibson is, it's a martini with silver skin pickled onion. So I added some of the pickle juice to that as well, and that worked brilliantly. But it's slightly murky, and I feel that this also is slightly murky in that respect. But what we have here is an absolute old-fashioned old fashioned cocktail lover's dream. And, uh, and we're pretty much done. So you could add more ice, but I like it with these sort of five or six really heavy cubes. Uh, and let's have a little taste. Oh. And this really is truly gorgeous blending combination. Everything balances, so nothing stands out above the rest. So the coffee doesn't dominate, the pistachio doesn't dominate, the cherry definitely doesn't dominate, the, the whiskey of course holds everything together. But what you've got is without anything dominating, Everything is clearly there and presenting itself. I really love this. So this is my coffee and pistachio old-fashioned. Cheers. Mmm. I'm going to leave that there because I know that Cheryl won't be coming for that one. In fact, Cheryl, leave that one there because that one's got my name on it, definitely. Um, Cheryl's saying, what do you think, Jeff? Well, we've got to ask Jeff because he's our cocktail competition winner from last week with that amazing tabletop old-fashioned. Cat Jam saying sounds delicious. Cheryl saying I'll let you know. So maybe Cheryl is coming in for that. Maybe I'll just sort of put it in range so she can try that. Okay, let's go back to our Whiskey Geek of the Week. Remember, we've got one more cocktail coming up uh, this evening as well. Let's have a little go of this. And, oh, hold on a second. As if by magic, suddenly evaporates, disappears, off it goes. Uh, here we go. So, back to question seven, eight, and nine, the third round of our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz. Remember, question set by Bob Robertson from last week. Uh, Cheryl is, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> I might be losing that as well. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> here we go. Uh, see, it used to be the case that Cheryl was this sort of faceless character that you, all you ever saw was her hand sneaking in and stealing the drinks. But because she spent so much time in front of the camera over the last few weeks, hey, you know, you know, who's, doing, you know who's doing the deal. Uh, Avril's saying you're welcome to a yuck coffee. Well, look, if you don't like coffee, then I guess that ingredient is going to go against you. Except what I would say is that this coffee, i.e. a cup of coffee, or using a little bit of coffee to just add a hint. So it might be worth you trying, Avril. On the other hand, there are so many other cocktails out there for you that you don't have to force yourself down that road. All right, here we go. Question seven, eight, and nine of our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz. Uh, Jeff, what are you saying? Going to have to get some more ingredients to give that one a go. Yeah, let us know what you think, Jeff. And, uh, and my fragile ego can take it. So if you come back and say it's okay, but not as good as your own, I'll live with that. Because you are the, the Dream Whiskey's cocktail champion. All right, question number seven. Uh, here we go. Which distillery is next door to the soon-to-be refurbished Brora distillery? Okay, so which one is next door to Brora? Um, quite a few geographical questions here. If you know your whiskey distilleries uh, in Scotland, especially in the Highland region uh, mostly, then you will have a good idea of what's going on. Uh, that was question seven. Question seven. Uh, actually, you know what? Question eight. I looked at it, and I actually thought the answer was different. I had to go and look it up and check, uh, but I was wrong. I don't know why I always thought it was something other than the answer, but here we go. What we want to know, what Bob wants to know for question number eight is, what barrels are used to finish Glenmorangie La Santa? So Glenmorangie produced a release called La Santa, uh, and what cask is it finished in? Or what barrel is it finished in? Uh, I'd like to know what type of barrel is it finished in, okay? Yeah, I thought it was something else, uh, but it's not. But as you don't know what it was, that I thought it was, then I'm not giving you any kind of clue. Unless, of course, you can read my mind. Uh, what is this? It's quite delicious, but sorry, Jeff's is better. Whoa! Okay, that's actually my wife saying that. I mean, that's like, like a dagger to the heart here. Uh, Cat Jam, what are you saying? I might improvise with pistachio cream liqueur and Kahlua. 
<laughs> Listen, improvise away. You know, I encourage people to be creative. I think what you're going to come up with is an entirely different drink, but entirely different to this, yes. But I still think it will taste delicious with those ingredients, I have to say. Uh, question nine, question nine of our Whiskey Geek of the Week. Uh, and uh, what I want to know, or what Bob wants to know, is which distillery is in Edgerton. So which distillery is in Edgerton? Excellent. All right. So that is the third of our four-part competition for our Whiskey Geek of the Week. The last questions are going to come up after our final cocktail. And the final cocktail, I've got to say, I, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to sharing this with you. So I've called this a grapefruit iguana. Uh, and it goes in a glass, which I know a number of you have seen uh, before. You've seen me use it. It's this uh, um, a retro replica of a 40s stroke 50s champagne saucer coupette style glass. Love this. Uh, Avril saying you might get it back off of Cheryl. I might do. You might be right, actually, Avril. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, questions, by the way, seven, eight, and nine, Cheryl's put up in the comments if you missed those. Uh, but we're going to serve it in one of these. And uh, we're going to start, actually, by putting a rim on the glass. Oh, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an orange. Let me just get that plate. And let me just get these. I'm going to take an orange, which I'm going to use for one of the ingredients. I'm just going to cut it in half so that we can put a rim on the glass. Now, what I've done here... Actually, let me put this on the plate. Let me just sprinkle this on the plate. So I'm going to put this as a rim on our glass. And this is something that I produced actually for a related drink that I created. But what we've got here is I took uh, some orange peel. So I peeled an orange and I, I put the peel into an oven on a very low heat. So I think something about uh, 80 degrees. And I just let it dry out there. So it didn't cook, it didn't burn, it didn't go black or anything like that. It just dried out. When it came out, I put it in a pestle and I ground it up. So it eventually ended up uh, like this. And when it was quite small, I added some sugar to it. And so what we have here is this mixture of sugar and orange peel, which is dried and ground. And what you have is something which is sweet, but the aroma that comes off of this is intoxicating, incredible, deep, rich, slightly cooked orange aroma. And that's what I'm gonna to use to put a rim on this glass. So I'm gonna take my glass, I've obviously cut open this orange that I was handling just before. I'm gonna use the rest of this orange, but I'm just gonna use that to put the rim of the glass through so we can get that wet, which means that as that goes into, our little mixture of dried orange peel and sugar. Let's just shake that off. You end up with that. So we've got that lovely orange and, uh, and sugar rim on the glass like so. All right, good. Let's put that to the side. Let's get that out of the way as well. And now let's start to put this together. So this drink is stirred. So we're gonna stir and then strain it into this coupette. So I'm going to start with the orange, because the orange actually is key to this. You can make this with orange juice that you get in a carton, but really, 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 you know, if you're going to try and recreate this drink, go buy yourself an orange, cut it in half and squeeze it. Who's talking to me, by the way? Cheryl, didn't you burn it? No, that was the one that didn't work. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, what are you saying, Nikki? Nikki's saying, uh, love the name, love the glass. Looks like gold dust. It does look like gold dust. Yeah, I might even patent that. Uh, Steve Simpson, sorry you're late. I hope everyone is well. I hope you're well as well. Thank you for joining us, Steve. Uh, Nikki laughing at the fact that I may have burnt the first attempt. Space dust as well. I, I, maybe I have to uh, uh, patent this, this sort of rim. Maybe we can mass produce it because it, it takes a while to produce, actually. So maybe we can mass produce it and sell it. I don't know. Anyway, look, uh, the juice of a whole orange. So I'm going to get that in there. Going to squeeze that in really makes a difference. I mean, you know, I'm not going to be so over precious as to say don't use cartoned orange juice. I mean, if that's all you've got, then use it. That's absolutely fine. Let me just tip that out. Uh, but if you've got a fresh orange, which are relatively straightforward to get hold of, then then you know go for that. It makes a huge difference to the drink. So the juice of a whole one, uh, and if I was going to give you a measurement for that, I'd probably say around about 
35 to 40 ml of orange juice. All right, let me just pop that in there. Let's just wipe that down. Now our ingredients. Obviously, we're going to start with our whiskey. And I'm going to add 35 ml of our whiskey. Remember, this is our Glendronach 12. Uh, gorgeous Highland whiskey. There we go. Uh, perfectly themed for our quiz tonight as well. Now I'm going to add some Campari. Uh, and Campari... Uh, is, is, I guess, most associated uh, in terms of cocktails with either an Americano or, of course, with a Negroni. Uh, for those of you that follow me on a regular basis and watch these broadcasts, whether it's live now or the many hundreds of you that watch afterwards the recording as well during the week, then you will also know that we put this into a Boulevardier cocktail, which is a bit like a whiskey version of a Negroni. And you'll also know that this week's whiskey competition is based on the Boulevardier cocktail as well. Uh, I've actually just given you some clues, by the way, if you are members and you are getting involved in that competition. But Campari, so wonderfully aromatic and fruity, deeply fruity and beautifully bitter as well. And we're going to put 25 ml of our Campari in. So let's get that in. And that always says something really fantastic to the colour. There are so many red spirits and liqueurs, but none quite like Campari when it comes to actually doing something to the colour. And then finally, I'm going to add this, and this is where the grapefruit comes from. Uh, and this is the uh, um, Chippa uh, grapefruit or, or pink grapefruit liqueur. Uh, really aromatic, incredible amount of grapefruit that comes through it. Not overly sweet at all. It is really very true to the flavor of grapefruit and combines beautifully with the freshly squeezed orange juice as well. And again, I'm going just over the, the shot or just over the UK shot. So I'm going for... 33.0. So we've done 35 of whiskey, we've done 25 of our Campari, and we've done 30 of our grapefruit liqueur. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some ice, and we're going to give this a really good stir. And for those of you that haven't heard me say this before, the reason why I'm stirring this cocktail as opposed to shaking this cocktail is that there is a difference, right? When you shake a cocktail, you add so much more water to it. And there, is, there, there are certain cocktails that need that additional water. And there are certain cocktails that need a control over the dilution. This is one of them. So we're going to mix it and chill it. But what we're going to do is really control the dilution. So we're, nowhere, we're adding nowhere near as much water to it. But what I do is with my fingers on the side of the glass as I'm holding, I've got a, a real good handle on the temperature of this drink. And I want, to, I want it to drop. I want it to get really cold. And I can feel it dropping nicely now. Temperature is really good. Color is beautiful. Aroma is incredible. There we go. Uh, let's get this on the top. And we're going to strain this into our what? Our space dust or our, our gold dust or our fairy dust rimmed coupette. And here we go. And the color goes beautifully. And when you drink this through the sugar and the desiccated orange that is on the surface of the drink, you have something in our grapefruit iguana, which is an unbelievably spectacular drink. In fact, listen, many of you know that when I was much younger, I entered loads of competitions. I did uh, you know, pretty well in a lot of them. I didn't do so well in others. But, but whilst I have no regrets, I, I, I definitely think that I wish I would had the opportunity to enter this into one of those sort of professional mixology competitions way back in the day because this would have been such a fabulous drink to have brought out and introduced to people back in the 90s which is when i was sort of doing my stuff really um, but we're not in the 90s now we're way on and uh, we have the benefit of trying this so let's have a little go oh my goodness it is just sensational and when i say it i'm not trying to say it. That I'm sensational. What I'm trying to say is that it is a fantastic drink. You know, if you guys, uh, um, I, know, I know that some of you write down all the recipes that we do. I don't know if you ever get around to making them, but if you want to, to, to knock yourself out with an amazing drink, this one is it. If you hate Campari, I'm going to say that this one might even turn the corner for you with Campari because it actually blends it beautifully. Uh, but really, really happy with that. Uh, 
Cheryl saying, wow, that's strong. What are you talking about? Are you talking about this one that I just made here? Or are you talking about, oh, I see. Oh, you're talking to Paul, right? Loving the Wolfburn Lang skit tonight. We've got to be careful. It's 50. Wow, that is strong. That is definitely strong. Be careful, be careful. Uh, serious question to the group. Who likes Campari, said Cheryl? Well, Avril does, for one. Uh, Campari makes fabulous cocktails. Love and Negroni. Yeah, me too. Loving the Negronis. Uh, Nikki saying, looks pretty indeed. Beautiful color. I agree. Gorgeous color. Everyone thinks it looks great. Well, let me tell you, it looks great and it tastes great. And Avril saying, looks like the best one tonight. I'm going to tell you, it is the best one tonight. All three are delicious in their own way, but this one, fantastic. Okay, uh, already Richard Webster. Where do I go to get the grapefruit liqueur? Well, um, there's loads of places, but if you want to pick up this, uh, this Giffard grapefruit liqueur that I used, uh, you can go on to uh, Amazon for a start and you'll find it there. Uh, what are you saying, Barry? But is, actually, you're right. Barry's just made something very interesting. A grapefruit is no good for someone on medication. Uh, and that is because, and I know this, that actually it blocks the receptors, uh, which means that you, you don't pick up the benefits of that medication. My brother, for example, can't eat or drink grapefruit. You're right. Uh, so no good if you're on medication. So please don't drink this if you are. But if you are not, then uh, go for it. And yeah, definitely Amazon. Uh, loads of other places will have it, but you can definitely get this on Amazon for sure. Um, replying to Paul, Paul Musson, the alcohol doesn't overpower the whiskey then. Okay, right, so that's a little conversation going on there. Right, brilliant. So those are our three cocktails for tonight. Let's do uh, the last round of our Whiskey Geek of the Week for this week. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, have you managed to nail some of the answers? I know that last week, um, yeah, last week was, was a big challenge. Uh, I don't know. Is this week a big challenge as well? Could be. Question number 10. Get your pens and papers out again. Question number 10. Uh, want to know who owns and runs the Blair Athol distillery? Okay. Uh, and when I say who, I mean which company. All right. So which company owns and runs the Blair Athol distillery? I'll give you a clue. They're pretty big. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Cheryl. <laughs> True, grapefruit juice interferes with the P450 enzyme system. Right, so, <laughs> right, my wife might be giving you a clue as to uh, what she specializes in now. Because um, you all thought she specialized in sitting at the bar, uh, uh, giving me a hard time and drinking cocktails. Uh, but now you might have a better clue as to what she specializes in. Barry's saying he loves grapefruit. All right, uh, question 11, question 11. I'd like to know which distillery has Winter's Gold as a special edition. Winter's Gold as a special edition. Now, if you guys have been, any of you guys have been watching me for the last year or two or whatever, actually, I have used this whiskey uh, in previous broadcasts. So, do you know which one it is? Uh, or, or which distillery it is, actually. So, which distillery has Winter's Gold as a special edition? Uh, question 12. Now, normally we only have 12 questions, but we've got 13 tonight, so there's an extra one. Question 12. Uh, I'd like to know, in Creef, uh, there's two points up for grabs here, by the way. Okay, so it's a two-part question. In Creef, which distillery claims to be the oldest in Scotland, and what year was it founded? I guess you either know this or you don't, right? Um, Bob's saying, Enzyme System has lost its job. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. So, in grief, which distillery claims to be the oldest in Scotland and what year was it founded? Two point question. Do you know the answer? I'll tell you what, if you know the answer, good one. Uh, and now to the last, the final question in our Whiskey Geek of the Week. Uh, and uh, we're going to find out shortly who the winner is. Uh, and, and here we go, question 13. I'd like to know which Speyside distillery, so we, we're just stepping out of Highlands now, which Speyside distillery makes Red Door Gin, okay? So which Speyside whiskey distillery makes Red Door Gin? There you go. So those are all our questions. Uh, question 12 has two points, which that means that tonight's quiz is going to be out of 14 points. Remember, if you are the winner, you've got to mark your own scores and be honest. 
with what you do. I know you guys are very honest, uh, but will you get yourself onto our winner's gallery? We'll find out soon. Bruce, what are you saying to us? Oh, what's going on now? Look, how many of you? So Kat's saying, I thought it meant you metabolize drugs more rapidly. Uh, what, the grapefruit? This is turning, it's going to become like a, an NHS kind of Q&A going on in a second here. And now I think it's the opposite, Kat. I think it, it prevents you from absorbing it. Or is that how it works on the P450 enzyme system? Wow. <laughs> wow. Whoever would have thought this conversation would have gone down this route? Bruce, what are you saying? You made some bourbon sugar. Use it to rim a glass. And we will be using some to top some sugar cookies. Uh, Bruce, you're, as far as I'm concerned, you're like a, a, a mixology alchemist with the stuff you come up with. Loving all of that. Loving all of that. All right. So, uh, we have done our Whiskey Geek of the Week. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back. I'm going to give you the answers. You're going to total up your score. Remember, it's out of 14 points. So, if you uh, got the highest score, you're going to be our Whiskey Geek of the Week for this week. And we'll put you and your beautiful picture, which, by the way, from now on, has to somehow match up to Bob's photo, uh, which has put all of us to shame uh, and pretty much put every photo I've ever taken uh, of myself on the site uh, to shame as well. Hmm, can we match up to it? Or is it just too far ahead of, for all of us? Uh, oh, you can always actually hire a Bob's wife uh, if you want to do it as well. All right, here we go. So let's go back. Answers coming up. <laughs> Barry, sorry, my fault. Yeah, Barry, look what you started here, right? <laughs> this is just crazy. Um, here we go. Whiskey Geek of the Week, question one, two, and three. These were anagrams. Uh, I wanted to know the whiskey or the whiskey distillery. Question one, Mad Law. We were looking for Dalmore. Dalmore. Even I got that one. Dalmore. Question two, A Morning Glee. A Morning Glee. That was Glen Morangi. Uh, or Glen Morangi. Or Glen Morangi. Uh, that probably sounded the same every time I said it. Now I think about it. But um, there you go. Question number three, Up Teen Dolly. Up Teen Dolly. Old Pultenay. Old Poltenay. So that's questions one, two, and three. If you've got those, you get a point for each. That's a point for each. Question four. Wanted to know which whiskey distillery is closest to Loch Ness. So what we're looking for here is Muir of Ord. Muir of Ord. I think I pronounced that correctly. Some of my pronunciations might be out, but Muir of Ord is what we're looking for. Question number five. I want to know what is the new distillery near Dingwall called? Uh, so what is it called? And according to Bob, it's called Glen Wyvis or Glen Wivis. Again, not entirely sure how that's pronounced. So Glen Wyvis or Glen Wivis. Spelled G-L-E-N-W-Y-V-I-S. Yeah, okay. Point if you got that. Question six. Which Japanese-owned Highland distillery is just south of Inverness? We were looking for Tomaten. Tomaten. Did you get it? If you, if you got it just on your own, in your house, go, yay. Actually, that was a bit dull, wasn't it? More, more yay, like that. Uh, question seven. We want to know which distillery is next door to the soon-to-be refurbished Brora distillery. Uh, and uh, we're looking for Kleinlish. Kleinlish. Wow. I'm sorry about this. This drink is just spectacular. I don't know why it tastes better tonight than the one that I made earlier on, but um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I added a bit more of the grapefruit. Mm. Loving this drink. Got to do something with this drink, for sure. Uh, question number eight. What barrels are used to finish Glenmorangie La Santa? Okay, so I don't know why I had port in my head, but it's not port. Um, it's sherry. It's sherry. Uh, oh, um, Michael saying, is it Muir or Glen Ord? Uh, think so. Think so. If you've got one or the other, uh, you can go with that. I'm good with that. Um, especially as Michael is one of our sort of most established geeks. Definitely. Uh, yes, uh, sold uh, a singleton of all. Oh, is that right? Okay, cool. All right, so that's a thumbs up. We've got a definite thumb up. Had a Glen Ord too. That's good. All right, so let's just make that clear. If you've got Glenor, we're cool with that as well. So you get a point for sure. All right, question number nine. 
which distillery is in Everton? Uh, I was looking for Bow Blair. Bow Blair. I just got a feeling we've got some high scores coming in tonight, certainly from what you guys are just putting in there. So that was Bow Blair. Question 10. I said, who, as in which company, owns and runs Blair Athol? Uh, and uh, I'm looking for Diageo. Diageo, who uh, I've had all sorts of uh, relationships with over the years. And they are the uh, beer moth, I think, of um, whiskey distillery ownership, definitely. Question 11. Uh, which distillery has Winter's Gold as a special edition? Remember, we've actually used this in broadcast before. I've either stood here and drunk it with you, or I've used it to mix in cocktails. It's Dalwini. So Dalwini is the answer to that. Again, a point if you've got that answer correct. Very good. Question 12. In Creef, I want to know which distillery claims to be the oldest in Scotland and what year was it founded? So we're talking about Glen Turret. Uh, and actually, we did some stuff with Glen Turret um, a couple of years back, I think, didn't we? You know, we're giving away a few nice Glen Turrets. And we're looking at 1775. 1775. I, I, th I think you've got to have that right on the button to give yourself a point. Because it's, you know, you either know it or you don't. So if you just guessed and you somehow got within 10 years, then you're just lucky. Uh, but if you nailed it, it's because you know it. So a point for each, one point for each. And the final question, I ask you which Speyside distillery, this is a whiskey distillery, makes Red Door Gin. I'm looking for Ben Romack. Ben Romack, and that is it. So total up your scores. It's a total out of 14. Put your score in the comments box. If you've got the highest score, then you are our winner this week. And I'll explain to you in case you don't already know what you need to do. So we've had quite a run over the last few months in cocktail competitions. We've been locked down. We've been broadcasting every week. And uh, we are looking at how we're going to evolve uh, a little bit further what we're doing at Dream Whiskies. Uh, and uh, nothing's going to change uh, immediately, but any changes we make hopefully are going to be for the better for all of you guys who are already members, people who want to join us, people who view us more. Uh, but we're looking at it. So over the coming weeks, what I'm going to be doing is just giving you updates. And that's either updates live during these broadcasts or updates via email. So check out the emails that I send out. But we're just going to sort of get you uh, on the right path with us to the next stage of what we're doing with Dream Whiskies. Anyway, let's see how we're doing here. Paul Musson struggled with my geography tonight. <laughs> or is it the 58% whiskey? I only scored seven. Well, listen... Uh, I think anyone who's been drinking 58% whiskey is doing well to even write 58% whiskey. Uh, so you got seven, not bad. Avril, three. Uh, so this one got Avril. Kaz, 12, of course. Dave, my best score so far, nine. Barry, 12, but Mr. G helped me with half of them. Is that right? Okay. Uh, Cat Jam, 10. Well, Barry, I still got to put you in against Kaz, I think. Uh, so far we've got two 12s out of 14. Um, uh, do we let Barry and his intimate relationship with uh, um, Mr. G, uh, and, uh, or is that cheating? What do we say? I mean, I'm assuming that you mean Google rather than, you know, uh, somebody who lives next door to you called Mr. G. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> Should we just put someone into a tie break with Kaz? Michael, did you play or are you still counting yourself out? Uh, let us know. I'm assuming that you haven't put a score up, so you, you're still counting yourself out of the game. But what did you score anyway, Michael? Let us know. Mm. Okay, so just as we're pulling in the final scores, waiting for a few more comments to come up. Uh, just want to uh, say that um, uh, it's been a funny old period, hasn't it, uh, over, over lockdown. And, uh, and I feel like we've come full circle, not that lockdown's finished or not that the pandemic is over, but when we started doing these lockdown broadcasts earlier in the year, um, it was dark outside. And then as we've gone through, uh, the sun has been out and it's been bright as anything. And now I'm standing here on the 2nd of September and of course it's dark outside again. So I feel like we've come a kind of a, uh, what's that? Um, of course, Mike, I've got the lot, but I ain't playing. Michael, you just got to stop being a hero. Uh, I might have to just sort of draw you in as the winner, even if you don't like it. Um, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, we've gone through quite a lot together. And I want to thank everyone 
that has really stuck with us over this lockdown period. Really appreciate your support. But like I say, we've got some changes coming up, so keep a, an ear to the ground and an eye out for your emails, and I will keep you in the loop over everything. But uh, no fear, I'm going to be back next week, so don't worry about that, just in case you're wondering whether I was going to shut this down. Um, Paul Marson, uh, I think the honesty is worth a tie break entry if nothing else. So do I. Right, let's put... Okay, so Michael got the lot, but um, I think Michael is some kind of whiskey geek computer brain. We might have to make some kind of statue of him, like an idol that we can all hand out maybe as an award, who knows. But um, So Michael's taking himself out of the game. Let's put Barry and Kaz into uh, a, yeah, is it just Kaz and Barry? Sorry, just checking the, the scores as I'm scrolling down here. So let's put you into a tie break. I've just realized that I've got a tie break question here that I might have asked you before. I can't remember. <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing. Okay, I, I tell you what, I'm not going to ask you this question. Uh, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you a cocktail question. It's not a whiskey cocktail question, um, but it's going to kind of be one of these things. Uh, what's this, No Way Man? Uh, I, oh, what? Is that No Way Man, uh, as in make some kind of statue out of you? No, I was only joking, really. If I was going to make a statue out of anyone, I'd probably make it out of myself and then hand it to myself. I make myself feel better about it. Don't worry, I won't, <laughs> I won't do that to you. Okay, here we go. Tiebreak question, okay? Kaz and uh, Barry. Uh, uh, it's a number, okay? Uh, you, the, the closest to the correct answer without going over. So I want to know how many ingredients are in a classic, uh, and I use the word advisedly, a classic Long Island iced tea, okay? How many ingredients would you find in a classic Long Island iced tea? And just to be clear, I am not counting ice as an ingredient. Put your answers in, okay? So it's both Kaz and Barry. Barry, I'm giving you the best. Ch What's that past microsatchel for a while? Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going... Oh, Cheryl saying, what's my age? What, what like, people... <laughs> No, don't guess my age. You can guess my age, I don't mind. <laughs> but I'm going to go for the cocktail one. We can have another one, just generally you can guess my age. As long as everyone says that I look younger than I am, then you, you're cool. You're cool. We're all good with that. I want your answers in. So Kaz, give us a number. I want the right answer without going over. If you go over, you're out. Um, so you need to be clever here. How are we doing? Uh, Barry's gone for three. Okay, not bad. Cat Jam, not dark yet in Northern Ireland. We hang on to it. Yeah, of course, because you're that, that much further north. Because we're completely south here. Uh, um, well, I mean, uh, how much... Whereabouts are you in Northern Ireland, by the way, um, Cat? I do know, because obviously I've sent stuff out to you. I think Kaz has played tactically there. I think Kaz thinks it's a higher number and has just gone one more than Barry. Kaz, is that what you did? Because, uh, because, um, okay. <laughs> oh, Tim's still with us. I didn't know you were still with us. Uh, is your age the same as the number of ingredients in a Long Island iced tea? Thank you very much. That's what I like. Right, so the actual answer for a Long Island iced tea is, um, is seven, actually. So it's uh, vodka and tequila and white rum and triple sec and gin and lemon juice and cola. Seven. Uh, which means that Kaz is our winner. Kaz, look, I'll tell you what, Kaz, uh, are we going to, uh, and not that I want to force your hand or anything, but with you having won it so many times, and poor old Barry, even with the help of Mr. G, getting completely done on this tie break, do you want to, I don't know, what are you going to do? Uh, up to you, Kaz. Do you want to hand it over to Barry? Should we make Barry our whiskey geek this week and get him to write some questions for us? Kat, what are you saying? About half an hour from Belfast. Okay, I've uh, been to Belfast a number of times, uh, uh, quite a few times actually. Uh, we're going to get about half an hour more light in London. Nice one. Uh, and I'm south of London, so probably a little bit more as well. Uh, Bruce, what is this? A question. How many licks does it take to get to the centre of a Tootsie Roll Pop? Right, I don't even know what a Tootsie Roll Pop is, but I'm reckoning that it's some kind of ice lolly thing. Uh, Barry's already saying congrats to Kaz. Okay, so we, we're going to give it to Kaz. 
We're going to give it to Kaz. Kaz, I didn't want to take away your... your I, I just wonder whether it'd be fun to put Barry in, but uh, give it to Barry. <laughs> no, Kaz wins. I'm loving this. This is like some kind of domestic going on. Right, I'm going to give it to Kaz. Um, I, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, okay? Uh, I, I said tiebreak for one winner, but I'm going to give it... A, we're, we're going to call it a joint win tonight. Because I quite like the idea of, Barry, if you're up for this, do you want to go for um, uh, six questions and Kaz, six questions for next week? Uh, just let me know. Yes or no? You both in for that? If we call it a joint win? Just let me know in the comments there. Uh, Paul, <laughs> I, don't, I think I'm a long way behind the comments. Uh, we found this. Uh, Cheryl says that I'm about sort of 30, 40 seconds behind your comments here, which you probably know, actually. Um, just give me a give me an indication. Are you guys happy to do that? Uh, Barry saying three six four. I'm not, I'm not even sure what that means. Uh, three hundred sixty four, meaning uh, half the questions each. Yeah, yeah. Cat, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yes, joint win says Cat. Good. Right. Okay, that's the deal. Okay, joint win. That means I want a picture, please, from both of you with either a bottle of whiskey, whatever you're drinking tonight, or a glass of whiskey. That would be brilliant. And, uh, and then we will ask you to do 50% of the questions each. I might give, I don't know, one, three, five, seven, nine, and, and, and so on and so forth. But I'll be in touch with both of you, obviously, on Messenger. Uh, Barry's cool with that. That sounds good. Kaz is cool with that. Wow, this is the United Nations of whiskey victories. Good job, everybody. All right, look, we're at the end of our broadcast for this week. As ever, look after yourself. If you are not a member... Go over to our site and sign up. We need you to sign up so we can give you more of what we do. More, more often, better, all that sort of stuff. So sign up if you're just a viewer. Uh, if you're a member, get yourself back into the whiskey competitions and the spot prize, which of course this week is a spectacular spot prize because it's not only my full suite of online cocktail training courses, but actually Tim Dunlop, who I think, Tim, you're still with us, just wave if you are. Uh, Tim has also chucked in a bottle of the, uh, the Jiffar uh, Brown Creme de Cacao, which looks like this. Yeah, there he is. And uh, so great prize up for the spot prize. Again, remember, you can enter that on our website if you remember. But until the same time, 7 o'clock next week, look after yourself. Be good, be happy, drink whiskey, and I will see you same place, same time next week. Be good. Bye.